Hey everyone, in this video today I'm going to be discussing maladaptive daydreaming. Now, daydreaming, everybody daydreams, it's where we just kind of get lost in our minds for a bit, we're not really aware of our surroundings, people may daydream about things they want to do, they may daydream about their plans, they may de daydream about being with friends, um, but you know, daydreaming doesn't usually interfere that much with a person's life. Um, however, maladaptive daydreaming is when it becomes a problem. Now, I first heard about maladaptive, maladaptive daydreaming on a YouTube video is in my recommended. And when I watched it, I realised that this is something that I have experienced for a very long time and it has caused issues. And I then did a lot of research on it and I actually want to share it because I do believe that there are many others out there who are dealing with this and don't know what it is or feel uncomfortable speaking about it because some people feel like it's embarrassing to talk about. But maladaptive daydreaming was discover discovered and, and described um, for the first time by Eli El a Dr. Eli Soma in 2002. And he realised that people who maladapted daydream, they have very vivid daydreams um, and people can have difficulty sleeping because they're daydreaming so much. People might wake up in the morning and wonder whether they'll have enough time in the day to daydream. People might um, struggle to study because they may get so distracted by their daydreams um, and, and people can spend hours in the day daydreaming and it does become almost like an addiction. It has actually been described as a form of behavioural addiction or dissociation. Um, but when we have these daydreams, it can lead to a dopamine release and an, sort of a release of endorphins as well. So it can become very addictive. Um, and, you know, when we try and stop daydreaming, you know, it, it does just happen. It's very difficult to stop um, because we don't choose to do it really. Like it, it is like an addiction. But when we try and stop, we can actually get quite anxious and feel drawn to do it again. It's very difficult to deal with sometimes. And um, people have different triggers. Some people daydream a lot um, when pacing. They may be walking and they just get lost in their mind. Um, sw swinging, going on the swings is a massive one. Being on a trampoline or... Um, reading a book or listening to music. Music is a massive trigger for many people. Um, you know, rather than just listening to a song, we get lost in a world creating stories in our minds and we may repeat the same story on loop and th the song triggers it. And I didn't realise that not everybody does this all the time, but apparently not everybody does that all the time. Um, but yes, um, also like films or, or things like that can trigger it as well. Um, and some people, it may just happen when they're feeling really bored um as well um but it is different to normal daydreaming due to the impact it has on somebody's life and um people who experience maladaptive daydreaming we may actually talk to ourselves whilst we're daydreaming we may make the facial expressions of the daydream and we may actually have emotional reactions to the daydream as if they're happening Although we know that they're not, because this isn't a form of psychosis, we know that it's different to reality, but we still get so immersed in it that it almost sometimes feels real to us and we can react emotionally and sort of look like we are almost acting it out. Um, but this can make some people self-conscious if they do it in public. Um, but yes. Now, maladaptive daydreaming, as of yet, is not a formally diagnosed condition as it isn't in the DSM-5 but many people do experience this and they share their experiences with it and some people do talk to a therapist about it um, and there was a, a study on it for people who said that they experienced this and it found that people who deal with maladaptive daydreaming actually spend around 56% of their daily lives in a daydream whereas the control group it was 16% of their daily lives um, so you know it over half the day pretty much in a daydream and um 80 percent of maladaptive daydreamers have complex motor stereotypes also known as stimming whilst they daydream so people might um again like pace or rock back and forth people might um start running people might get a burst of energy and just start moving people may tap a pen um for me the big thing is this like i do that quite a lot two things it happens if i'm daydreaming or if i'm very excited um but for me that is a complex motor stereotypy 
and it happens a lot when I'm daydreaming um, but it is completely involuntary it's not something I, I consciously do the daydream just comes into my mind um, but yeah 80% of people who maladaptive daydreaming actually have that and people people so are sometimes playing a different character for me I am always myself when I'm daydreaming but some people do actually play different characters um, I think they call them paramis um, and I think that um, people also have their inner world it's like a paracosm I think it's that but a paracosm is basically somebody's uh, inner world some people make their own worlds but for some people it is just um, you know the normal world but it's different for everybody maladaptive daydreaming has actually been found to be often co-occurring with conditions such as ADHD OCD anxiety and depression and it's also in 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 the study people were actually assessed for OCD and ADHD and they were all found to have traits but not enough to have a diagnosis of these conditions so it may share some similarities but it's not necessarily the same thing when people are playing themselves in a daydream it may be an idealized version of themselves based on what they admire about others and, and their role models or based on what people are taught is good and you know people are playing this character in their mind of their idealized self but then may be upset that they're not actually that person um and people may also use it as an escape from reality um and it actually can get worse over the years you know some people might harmlessly daydream but it keeps building it keeps building um to the point where it it causes it creates havoc in somebody's life um and sometimes people actually feel really lost in their mind they struggle to be mindful most people can walk around and be aware of their surroundings but a person with maladaptive daydreaming may struggle with that and may keep getting lost in daydreams similar to adhd people with adhd get distracted by their own thoughts but this is just random scenarios and stuff and some people may have characters in their daydreams it can be uh, random characters that they've created or people from tv shows or celebrities or people that they know Having maladaptive daydreaming can make it very difficult to do daily tasks because you keep having to pause because you start daydreaming. I do this when watching YouTube videos. I'll keep pausing because I'll start daydreaming. Um, and people may actually try and set aside time every day to, to daydream. Um, this is what I did, but the time increases because it becomes addictive and it's very difficult to stop. And some people speculate that maladaptive daydreaming may be caused by childhood trauma which in some cases it is but then there are many people who have it who do not have a history of any sort of childhood trauma at all so it may be different for everybody but it having this it can distract us from everyday responsibilities we may struggle with studying we may struggle to do things we actually enjoy because we are so immersed in these daydreams um and, and that was definitely the case for me and people may also um people may also feel disconnected from the outside world as they are lost in a daydream and it is something that we can control to an extent um sometimes daydreams do come randomly we can still um you know if we're doing something we can still interact with the daily world however we often have the urge to get back to daydreaming and that's why we might spend more and more time every day doing it um and sometimes people may actually have discussions in in their daydreams and stuff um with the characters in their daydreams um and sometimes it does get to the extent where it causes issues now in my personal experience i have traits of this because i i have daydreamed since a very young age in my school report at age four it says that i daydream all the time at my first CAMS appointment, uh, CAMS in the UK is Child and Adolescent Mental Health Services, but it said that I was daydreaming all the time. Then at the age of around 13, I started going out on the swings, listening to music, and I would spend a lot of time daydreaming. And that, at the time, it's probably only like half an hour, an hour. Um, but then the time grew. And by doing this over and over again for years, it got to the point where, you know, like, six months ago I was out there every day for hours at a time and then it got to the point where sometimes it was the whole day I was just outside daydreaming and I couldn't stop I remember I tried to stop because I tried to do college assignments I ended up being very anxious and drawn to it because for me when I daydream it 
obviously it makes you feel good it makes you very <laughs> when you daydream it makes you feel good it makes you feel very hyper but it also it, it releases endorphins i can always feel it going through there um and it just makes you feel very good you can feel the endorphins going through the through your body um and you know you get dopamine which is like the reward uh, neurotransmitter which is why it's addictive um and it for me it was also on the trampoline a lot of maladaptive daydreamers can like spend hours on a trampoline daydreaming and i did that um and what it feels like for me is like when i get the urge to daydream i start feeling very um almost agitated and hyper and then once i do it after a few hours or so i'll suddenly feel heavy and calm because i've got it out of my system um so some people they might you know try and cram uh, daydreaming into the beginning of the day so that they can focus on everyday responsibilities but sometimes it does just get too much and we end up spending way too much time doing it um now thankfully for me it has reduced a lot um i was reading this article about how somebody went on an anti antidepressant and it actually reduced it and that is the same thing for me i went on sertraline and it has reduced it a lot I no longer go on the swings or the trampoline because I know that if I do that, I'm not going to be able to stop. Um, but also, I think that uh, lockdown helped me a lot. Like lockdown in the UK, also I had a panda slayer at the same time, stopped me from being able to go outside. So it pretty much solved the problem quite a bit. Although I do still uh, daydream whilst pacing. Like what I'll do is I'll, like I have to limit my time listening to music as well. And car rides are a massive trigger for many people. But I'll have to, um, you know, limit my time listening to music because music is a massive trigger i'll just start creating these fantasies in my head and then you know if i'm pacing if i'm walking sometimes i'll just go running that's because i'm stuck in a daydream and i'll be flapping my hands it's, it's stimming um i think maladaptive daydreaming may actually be quite common in the autism community as well and ever since a very young age when i was stimming people would ask me why am i doing that i would just tell them i'm imagining things because that's always been the truth i have been imagining things but it did get to the point, um, my mum adapted daydream, as I said, where it was taking hours out of my day, which is why I didn't really do much. Like, I went to college, um, my college day usually finished at about 12, um, and then I'd go home, and then I'd go to the park, and daydream for hours. And this isn't healthy, because most people would be having a part-time job or doing something productive, and then there was me unable to stop daydreaming and I remember actually trying to make a daily schedule and I was stressed because I couldn't find the amount of hours in the day to find the hours to daydream and it's not something we can say all right we're not going to do it anymore because it is like an addiction and the thought of not doing it can be terrifying sometimes and that's the problem with maladaptive daydreaming is that it's a it, it, it's good that's the problem it feels good which is why people end up doing it more and more and more and it can get worse over time but I'm just lucky now that the search lean seemed to help and being in lockdown has seemed to sort of reset it. So I'm not doing it as much now. So that's good. But I think that it is important for me to share this because um, apparently a lot of people don't talk about it because it does, you know, some people think it sounds strange and stuff. Um, but, you know, there are actually a lot of people with it. So if you have it, then you're not alone. And also, I think that if it's caused by trauma in your personal case, then you could um, heal that by seeing a therapist or, um, you know, doing inner child healing or being creative. Um, for me, I don't think there's any trauma for a trigger. It might just be related to how my brain works um, because I've done it since such a young age. Um, but for some people, trauma can be the trigger. And, um, you know, sometimes people use fidget toys to try and keep them occupied or a chewy gem. I find that if I chew on a chewy gem, it really helps me stop daydreaming. Um, I don't know why that, but it, it does. And sometimes it just helps to keep yourself occupied with things you enjoy. And a r another really random thing is because I struggle to be mindful a lot, I always, I always say I, I feel very sprightly. And that's because everybody else seems very calm and then... <laughs> And then there's me, like, I don't, I'm not diagnosed with ADHD. This can also resonate with people with ADHD as well. But I feel very sprightly because I feel, like, lighter, lighter than everybody else. Everybody else is really, um, I don't know what I'm saying, really serious and calm. And then there's me and I'm just stuck in a daydream. People are aware of their surroundings usually and I'm not because I'm, I'm always daydreaming. So I found that when I'm walking, focusing on my feet, I wear shoes with really big soles focusing on that as it touches the ground can sometimes help 
um, because it's keeping me focused and grounded on something so I don't go somewhere else uh, in my mind. But yes, um, those are just some things that's, that have worked for me and please tell me if you have had anything similar or if you think you might have maladaptive daydreaming. Also, another trigger that some people have is just lying in bed. You know, after a long day, if you haven't been able to daydream, people might lie in bed and daydream, but thankfully that's not a trigger for me because my triggers are mainly movement-based. There is a massive kinesthetic element to it. Um, but this is just some stuff that I have uh, found out about maladaptive daydreaming, but there is um, a lot more to it. Um, but this is just what I'm aware of now. So I really hope that this video has helped some people and that it is informative. Thank you for watching. Bye.